this many years have passed, and you can see here from the reaction, you can see uh, what these people in the audience are feeling, that they love you. Uh, what, has your, what has this last few years been like for you? Fantastic. It's amazing, but yeah, time ran away with me. <laughs> I don't know how we got here so quick. Yeah. Terrifying. But it, it's just been fabulous to work with all of these guys, to work with such talent, uh, and also to, to meet you people, to realize that the show is so popular and so beloved uh, all around the world. It's, it's, it's remarkable to find yourself at the center of that. So thank you for all of your affections. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the Christmas episode. Um, obviously, it was amazing that you were able to even put that together because I know you literally just wrapped. Yeah. So, what can you say about the Christmas episode? Is there any information that you have and, and uh, what can people look forward to? Well, I kind of think you've, you've probably figured out what we're doing here, in part. It's the 12th Doctor right. refusing to regenerate because he wants to stay Scottish. Uh, <laughs> and as he staggers out the TARDIS through the snow appears the first Doctor also refusing to regenerate. And it's the two of them, it's, it's the 12th Doctor saying to number one, listen, you have to or all this stuff won't happen. And the first Doctor saying, well, what about you? They go off on that crazy adventure with Mark Gatiss um, and, uh, and Bill Potts. Uh, and, uh, and decide whether or not they're going to carry on, which, of course, they are. Right. And David Bradley is amazing cat. He was an adventure in space and time. Yes, exactly. And so the idea that you would get the guy who played William Hartnell to then play the first Doctor, is a, how long ago did you start crafting that? Uh, the New York Comic Con. Uh, I, this moment must be on video because uh, somebody asked about what, the choice of Doctors and Day of the Doctor. And I said, well, obviously the Doctor you'd want to come and meet the modern Doctor is William Hartnell but he won't return my calls. Right. And, uh, and Peter said, well, we could just get David Bradley. So I presume on video I'm going, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I have to say, his recreation of William Hartnell is absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. There are moments, if you put it in black and white, you can fool people. And it gives it such twinkle, such grace. And because of, the, uh, of his background knowledge, or his considerable knowledge from Mark's wonderful movie, um, he, he just captures what the first Doctor was really like. Not the crotchety old man of legend, but a much twinklier, funnier, more engaging man than that. Right. Uh, Pearl, I think people are very excited to see you. Understand the fandom, and did you feel the, the the swell that was happening? Well, I think when um when I was announced, it was it was pretty epic. You know, the, the response was was large, but by no means does it compare to the amount of people that are sitting in front of. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, so no, I think the answer, the short answer is I, I don't think I was prepared for how how powerful the Doctor Who fandom is. I think it's, it's such an incredible thing and it's such a, it's such a gift to be able to be part of this, sort of, this family. This is wicked. Thanks for having me. Are you, you, you may have already confirmed or denied this in the press, but you are, are you, you're not coming back after the Christmas special? You are? No, that's it. That's oh, it? Uh, yeah, Christmas special, last chance to see Bill. But I mean, hey, it's Doctor Who, so never say never. <laughs> So just a little bit, can you talk a little bit about uh, who Bill was to you, and did, what did you learn about her throughout the process? Was she different by the end, by the time you came out the other end of it, in your mind? Yeah, I mean, she was a Cyberman. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, though. I mean, she does, get, she does get rescued in a beautifully romantic, which, I, by the way, the girl on the star, I haven't figured out, is that still the girl, or is it the pilot? Like, or is there traces of her in there still? Well, it's still, it's still her. It's, it's, oh, okay. Yeah. She's retained her, her personality, but she's transformed, as people sometimes do, into <laughs> an all-powerful alien entity uh, and rescue you romantically at the, in your hour of darkest need. And don't we all need that? Absolutely. <laughs> Someone with a star eye rising out of a puddle to say, I will take you, and then go on. So what did you, uh, what, what was special to you about Bill, and what are you going to miss the most? Um, I think uh, what was really special 
special to me about Bill was that she was so, she's so real. I think she she feels very. There's so many different elements to her. You know, there's this. She's very quick-witted and she's very inquisitive. But someone put it quite well today um, during one of our roundtable interviews. And there's a sort of like childlike curiosity to her as well, which which I think is great because I mean, who wants to grow up? And she, I think she does everything quite deliberately. But then, you know, accidentally she'll sort of wander off and get nearly dragged into a puddle. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I, I emailed Matt Lewis uh, last week just to say that I think Nardle is a triumph. Uh, I loved him. So thank you. It's nice to be here. Earth is one of my favorite planets. <laughs> I mean, for you, you know, I, I assume that you were probably, I've always been a huge Doctor Who fan. Uh, yeah, I mean, growing up, I was a fan, and then, and then when I was about 13, they stopped making it for about a million years, <laughs> which was a bit inconvenient. But yeah, it was, it's a pinch yourself uh, moment when you get asked to be in the show. So uh, every single day uh, I walked on set, I felt very, very lucky to be there. Who was, who was he in the beginning and where did he come out at the end? What, was, what do you think his narrative arc was? Well, I think the Christmas specials have a, a, a slightly different identity to uh, the regular series in that they're a bit lighter and bolder um, because people in Britain on Christmas Day eat turkey and there's an enzyme in turkey that makes you fall asleep. <laughs> so the Christmas special has to keep you awake. <laughs> um, and uh, so Nardole was very broad, I think, at the beginning. And I just thought, <coughs> excuse me, I just thought, oh, I'm just doing a, a cameo in Doctor Who, what a treat. But across the series, um, I realized that from a performance point of view, I had to try and find a bit more nuance and texture in there. But also, there was more time and space to develop that in terms of writing as well. So, um, yeah, it was, it was good to try and, and to develop different sides of the character. And that's my answer. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> what a lovely answer it was. <laughs> uh, I just want to say to Michelle, I think uh, Missy is uh, such a star. <laughs> your, your portrayal of her is so gorgeous and layered. and Because I think, you know, with a character like the, character like the Master or Missy, you... you there could be a, you know, oh, this is an evil character, but she's not. She really seems like she wants to do good. She's really struggling against her own nature. Did you feel that with her? Oh, absolutely. It's that tug of war, you know, of um, shall I do something good or shall I do something bad? Obviously, I'll do something bad. <laughs> it's just the pull to darkness is too strong. And um, But what was fun was to, was to sort of, you know, toy with the idea of being good. And, um, and also, I think, um, to get away from that two-dimensional character that she could have been, it could have been, you know, in black and white, um, is, to, is to sort of sit in that area, in that kind of grey area of emotionality, where it, is, it was interesting to possibly try on good for a minute and see how that feels. And it was really hard, actually, when you're looking into face like Peter Capaldi's with those great big blue watery grey eyes and, and and just want to kind of, you know, be his friend and then obviously um, not. <laughs> uh, it, was, was, it was difficult, it was a challenge. He presented me with a challenge. He, he really did because uh, it's, it's hard to act with this man and not want to be your best self. <laughs> but it, but it's, it's also that arc of uh, friendship. Yeah. And these beings have been around for so long, and, and, and that relationships are naturally complex. And well, that's it. There's, there's the history there. That there, there was a great friendship once. Uh, and, and it is a little bit like, you know, that friend that you all had that you were very close with. And then one day that friendship just starts to crack and break, and you have a little bit of distance and time. And then you meet them again a hundred years later, and you remember why you deleted them from your phone in the first place. <laughs> That type of dynamic. Love it. And also really fun to see uh, John Sim come back too. Uh, yeah. I have to say, if I'm going to love myself, <laughs> it was very nice to get a chance to love John Sim. Yeah, but Missy shuts him down. Like he goes for yeah, it, and she's she like, does. <laughs> yeah, she crushed him like a bug. Um, yeah, no, it was.
was um, it was all very wrong, Stephen. There was something very wrong about all of that, indeed. Um, but yes, it was an acting challenge that I hope uh, we will just do. You wanted to do it with a beard. I did it with a beard. <laughs> how do you how do you think she is? What how do you think she's handling dealing? Because you know everyone would love the opportunity to look at their younger self and say, "Stop being an idiot." Because he's obviously very singularly focused, and she's much more grown up and complicated by this point. So what is it that you think she is really wanting to convey to him in the last moments, where they essentially <laughs> stab each other in the back? Um, I don't, yeah, it's, it's interesting that she, they, they, yeah, they sort of, they kill each other. Somebody suggested it might have been suicide. That's a little dark. <laughs> um, but um, I, I think it's just it's some yoga. <laughs> Uh, Mark, what about you for the season? What is it? What has this season meant to you? What has this been like so far? And kind of knowing that it's you know ramping down and things are about to change. Well, it's it's a strange moment. You know, it's the end of uh, several eras, and you, it has that kind of melancholy to it. But it's also it's been a fantastic season. I think it was a, a joy to do my Ice Warriors episode and, and be part of this uh, of this great new uh, feel for it all. I think it's um, Christmas is a it's a t terrific episode. It's, I'm very privileged to be in and uh, to be there for, for Peter's exit uh, with Peter and David and, uh, and, and Paul. We've had a great time doing it. And it's, it's a lovely, it's a lovely way out, uh, it, and it's a it's a very Christmassy episode without being sort of on the nose Christmassy. It's sort of happy, sad. You know, it's got all those things that Christmas brings up in you. Uh, it's a it's a lovely exit. And we've had a great time doing. It. I want to. To kind of spend the rest of the panel, we're going to show you a clip. We're going to take a look back at uh, the last few seasons with Peter. We're going to have some time for audience questions. Uh, I also want to um, say that as you exit, uh, I am very excited to see uh, Jody Whitaker come in as 13. I think so. <laughs> You know, at the same time, I'm also very sad to see you go. And this is the thing that the show has done with us since the beginning, which is someone new comes in, there's about five minutes where you're like, I don't know about this. And then after two episodes, you're like, please don't go anywhere ever, you know? That was the same speech you made the last time I was here. It's 100% true. Not any less true. And you're absolutely right, because that's what the show does every single time. And you can see it, Pearl and Narla, like everyone is freaking out that, you know, you, you saw the, oh, don't go anywhere, you know? I mean, this show is about attachment and having to rip that away and get reattached the entire time, which spiritually is what it must feel like to be the doctor, I would imagine. Well, it's, it's astonishing uh, to be the doctor. I just wanted to say that um, uh, I think Jodie's going to be amazing. I spoke to her the other day, uh, and she's so full of excitement uh, and so full of uh, passion about the show. She really, really loves the show. Uh, and she's a brilliant actress, so uh, it's really, really thrilling to know that it's in the hands of somebody who, who cares for it so deeply, and it's going to do really, really exciting things with it. So she's a great choice. Well, so. Yes, I agree. I don't know. I feel... I just feel... I don't know why they... It's a bit tokenistic to cast a human as the Doctor. <laughs> No, we're making progress, you know, we're making progress, we're making progress. Oh. Uh, can I just say something as well? I just wanted, to, because I, I th I'm sure a lot of people in this room are feeling exactly as I do. There is um, uh, I, so many press articles about a backlash among Doctor Who fandom against the casting of a female Doctor. There has been no backlash at all. The story of the moment is that is that the notionally conservative Doctor Who fandom has utterly embraced that change yeah. completely. Woo! Eighty percent approval on social media. Not that I check these things obsessively. <laughs> um, and yet, so many people wanting to pretend there's a problem. There isn't. In fact, it strikes me the Doctor Who fans are more excited about the idea of a brilliant actress playing the part yeah. than the fact she's a woman. Yeah. It's been incredibly progressive and enlightened, and that's what's really happened. I wish every single journalist who is writing the alternative would shut the hell up. It's Woo! not true. innately couldn't be upset by that because Time Lords can regenerate into anything, so I'll just 
You're an asshole if you think <laughs> spend the last bit of time talking about you and being able to, to send you off here at Comic Con. It's very special that you all were here. Uh, we put together just a, a few minute uh, clip from the last uh, few years of you as the doctor, so let's roll that and then we'll come back and then we'll go to audience questions. <laughs>
I, I know that you were a fan of the show. You know, we've talked about that many times before. But when you were describing the Twelfth Doctor as a fan, how would you describe him? As a fan? Yeah, as a fan. I love him. <laughs> He's my favorite doctor. <laughs> he's certainly the most handsome. <laughs> and he's got the biggest hair. Yes. His hair had the biggest arm. It's not the biggest arm, the bigger And I think he's an alien. That's what, what my sort of ambition with it was to, to make him not a, a human being, but whatever strange and mysterious creature's doctor is. I don't know what kind of creature he is. He, he has a human uh, sensibility about him. We perceive him as a human, but I don't believe that's what he is. I think he's stranger and darker and terrible. So I want yeah. to, to invest him in the sense of And also fun and cloudishness and uh, silliness uh, and wittiness and all the rest of it. So when you were a child and you were watching Doctor Who and you probably thought, oh, it'd be really amazing to be the Doctor. Wow, what an amazing opportunity. What was something that you discovered Having done this for the last years, you're like, oh, I never knew it would be like this. Like, what's one thing, what's a piece of advice that you would give, practical advice for playing the doctor to anyone who might do so? Get a lot of sleep. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be up early every day uh, and be there all the time. Learn, learn all your lines. And, um, I, never, I never grew up thinking what it would be like to play the doctor. I just thought the doctor was the most amazing character that, that, that I could see. Uh, and... Uh, so I, I didn't, despite uh, the publicity department's efforts uh, uh, to make everyone believe this, and, and, and that they were successful, uh, I didn't spend my whole life grieving about the fact that I wasn't playing Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> I was just getting on with my, my life as an actor. But, but I, I loved the, the, the show and the character deeply. Uh, so it was a great thrill and surprise to find myself in it. And you even just said, this is something that I wanted to ask Stephen about, so there was a really nice nugget, specifically I feel like aimed at the fans in season 10, where they actually have the debate of is he the doctor or is he called Doctor Who? And a lot of people, if they go, who's going to play Doctor Who? People go, it's the doctor, that's not his name! But other people don't agree with that assessment. So do you have a final word on this either way? Or do you think it's... Uh, I, I defer to Mr. Chibnall, obviously. Um, <laughs> but if you take continuity seriously, and be honest, you all do, <laughs> there isn't any doubt about this. I'm sorry. It was established in the war machines that his name is Doctor Who. All right, there it is. He was called Doctor Who. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and when, when, when people call out to you in the street, they say, don't say, hello, the Doctor. They say, Doctor Who. He doesn't often call himself Doctor Who because he's a bloody stupid man. But... <laughs> himself Dr. W. The third doctor had a car with who on the license plate. He is not a master of subtlety. He thought, in order to be mysterious, I'll call myself Dr. Who. However, if you prefer to believe that he's really, that he calls himself the doctor and that's just the name of the show, that's also equally true. Because what would Doctor Who continuity be without blatant and unresolvable contradictions? <laughs> I think 
my icon was decided for me, which is uh, the best iconic moments always are, and it was uh, uh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> My eyebrows in the, in the, the 50th anniversary special, um, and that sort of, I guess, sort of said what my doctor was going to be a, 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 you know, a middle aged Scotsman with hairy eyebrows, <laughs> of which there are many. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for your question. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's going on? Oh, not much. Come, come. We work together. Nice to see you. Okay, so what, what is your question? Uh, my, first, I just want to say, uh, hi Pearl, you're amazing, thank you. Hi, thank you. Um, my question's actually for those who have written episodes. Um, I was wondering when you're writing, what do you think the most important element of the doctor's character is to not leave out when you're writing him? Or her, her. <laughs> We're in pronoun hell from now on. <laughs> Let's repeal gendered pronouns because we're going to be unable to talk. <laughs> oh, Mark, you got anything? Um, <laughs> what? Well, not to leave out. Well, I, I mean, the thing, I, it's, it's an old cliche, really, but the, the doctor is always the doctor. I think that's that's what happens. To, no matter who's playing it, you, you, you have a sort of default version. I was just saying to, to Steve the other day, you know, you, Trying to come up with a with a different character in a different sort of show, I, I sort of think, oh, I know exactly what the Doctor would do here, and it's because there's a huge amount of legacy to draw on, you know. But I think overall, it's it's a, it's a kind of attitude towards the universe, isn't it? It's a sort of basic uh, kindness, and a, but a, but a very very crooked path to get there, and I think not necessarily by choice, but it's just the most interesting way to get there is to go slightly off piste. Time. So I, it's just a, it's a it's a sort of beautiful eccentricity. I would say. Think also he's uh, he's not a professional full time hero. That's not what he's doing. He's racing around the universe to witness it, to see it, to experience it. What he can't bear though is people suffering. He's motivated entirely, irresistibly by kindness. He is the passerby who becomes the last man standing in every situation of terror that he passes. So that's, he's not trying to be that. He just can't help himself from being that. And that's the best story you can tell. The man who fights monsters and yet never becomes one. But also, I think, you know, it might be, maybe, maybe it isn't a really accident why the show is called this, but, but Doctor is the best possible name for him. <laughs> Uh, hey, button lady. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Congratulations on Mary. And that's a fantastic sweater. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, was, I just wanted to give a shout out to the lady who made this. Her name is Bridget. She has a website called Draw Four Designs. She knitted this by hand, and I hope she uh, enjoys that I wore it at Comic Con. Uh, <laughs> um, the three cast members that have been on stage, that have been on, on the camera, I'm over here crying because I'm going to miss you so bad. <laughs> Um, you've been fantastic, especially this last season. Thank you so much for every emotion that you've put me through. So thank you for that. My question's for Stephen. Um, in the, <laughs> no, I want to talk to all of you, but there's other people who want to ask questions. But my question's for Stephen. You also have to be careful not to cry because you can't dab your face on anything. Like, ow, ow, ow. ow. <laughs> Oh, 
I don't know, know but I instinctively rip off stuff even when I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Button Lady. Nice to see you this year. Uh, Hello. Uh, What's your name? Illyria. And what is your question? Um, my question is, what is all of your favorite doctors and companions? Mm. <laughs> favorite, favorite doctors and companions. <laughs> Well, I can now reveal it because I'm quit, I'm leaving, so it's no longer contentious. My favorite doctor, unequivocally, is Doctor Who. Other doctors hang around hospitals, It's a TV, in the nicest possible way, a television factory. 
you know, we have to make a show, we have to deliver that show, and we, we get on with it and do the best we can uh, within the time that's available to us. And sometimes we could have been better, or we could have, uh, be, 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 could have could not have been better, but we often don't know that. You know, I think actors are not a very good barometer of how good or bad they are being. Uh, I'm just grateful that, that, that I managed to get through all these years without getting the sack. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you couldn't have been much better up here, to be honest. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, for, for you, Pearl, what are you, you going to miss the most of this brief journey that you've had? All of it? Um, I don't know. I feel too attached to it still to look at it as objectively as that. Um, I think maybe after some sleep and a bit of sunshine I might be able to think about it more clearly, but it's been, it's been such an amazing journey. It's such, a, it's such an incredible show and it's so well loved and it's, it's so amazing to have been able to work with people who I have admired for many, many years. Um, so yeah, I would say probably that. I think working with all of you guys has been so amazing, so um, I'll miss that. Let's do it again sometime. Well, because it, you know, as an actor, it probably just feels like, oh, okay, well, you know, I obviously I like the show, but this is a, you know, it's a job, we gotta go to work, we gotta get these done, like you were saying. But, but when you see that it's actually uh, such a lifestyle for people, I mean, people will be cosplaying as Bill for the rest of time <laughs> now. Like, you will see, you're, you're a part of the universe now, and that's indelible, and I think, you know, particularly now, it's nice to feel like, it, to have a world where we see that, oh yeah, okay, it's not all crap, someone has our back out there, you know, someone really does have our back out there. I mean, that's, that form of escapism and that form of hope uh, is really important right now. So something that has been uh, really special for me, being able to watch the show and being like, oh, there is a perfect world somewhere. Uh, what is your name? And my name is uh, Russ. And my question is for the cast. Uh, there's a lot of great monsters and creatures within the Doctor Who universe, and I'm wondering if you guys have ever thought of something on your own and tried to bring it up. Uh, if anything that you really wanted to see has just been outwardly denied, or just you haven't talked about it ever. Robert Gloves. Robert Gloves coming alive. <laughs> just off the cuff there. Great thing to tell the Robert Marigolds. <laughs> I suggested, um, I suggested a, a monster that makes everyone gay, um, <laughs> particularly men between the ages of 22 and 28. Somebody else to come in and, uh, and have much better ideas than me. 
Um, that's, that's, that's the way it works. Uh, and, that's, and that's right and proper. Um, it's, you know, it's emotional to leave, though mostly at the moment I'm having the emotion of thinking, hey, I've got time off. Um, uh, but, you know, what I will, uh, the main thing I'll miss, I suppose, is this. I mean, I literally, in my life, never sit in a room of 7,000 people I'm faintly irritating again. You know, it's, it's, it's a unique experience. <laughs> so, uh, I went rogue. <laughs> The scene where I got to do Venusi and Aikido. Oh, yeah. That was my most. <laughs> was, uh, we studied that, Mark and I, I studied that uh, very intently. Yeah, make sure that we had a very accurate uh, John Pertwee esque noise and pose. <laughs> and, and I hope he's looking down on us and, and smiling. And then we got it back. Michelle, do you have a particular scene this that, season? That scene, because I just lo I loved Oliver Lansley. We were talking yeah, about Ellie Smurf Boy, the, the blue guy. And he was, <laughs> yeah, he was brilliant. And it was a very, it was just a fun kind of ensemble day where we all really enjoyed each other immensely. <laughs> I can uh, say I really, obviously, really enjoyed working with everyone here. But my up moment, which is in Oxygen, episode five, I think it was episode five, where. Nardo runs around the corner and says, there's a rescue ship on the way. And I loved it because never does anyone with this face get to say a line like that inside. <laughs> for good reason. And, but I am never, ever normally entrusted with a line of dialogue like that. So it was just lovely to go, there's a rescue ship on the way. <laughs> so that was my favourite <laughs> when it was absolutely pissing down with rain. <laughs> it was literally like rain, like, rain like you only get in Wales. You're probably not familiar with it, but it, it rains a lot. It's just like someone just pouring water onto you and this hair, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was, I thought it was really lovely. It's, um, I thought it was, it's really lovely. Um, just for the, all, of the, all of the crew, we were all kind of there and we were all sort of just kind in, it of, in it together and eating wet kebabs. Um, <laughs> getting more and more progressively damp but filming this really, really beautiful scene that was just really nice and quiet and honest and yeah, I think that was so I, can I just talk really quickly about being down a hole with John Stern and Matt Lucas? Please. Whilst, whilst um, Peter Capaldi is, is being held by a cyberman in one of the most beautiful shops where the, where the smoke just clears and, and we're coming back uh, through into, the, into that scene. But basically, Matt Lucas, John Stern and I were sat in, in, a, in a wee deck chair down a massive hole, a big gravel hole, just going, would you like a custard cream? <laughs> And it was all about the biscuits, really. And that, um, I'm sorry, has just completely um, destroyed that moment. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for your question. Uh, hey, what's your name? <laughs> yeah, you. Oh, stop that right now. Stop it. Stop it. I'm going to eat you. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. 
you know, it's, 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 it's um, you know, every day is, is, has its hardships, that's what it's like. <laughs> 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 Obviously it doesn't because it's wonderful, every, every, but, but every day there's something difficult to do. Often the, one of the difficult things to do on a regular basis is to look at a monster that's not quite as cosmic as you had hoped. <laughs> And invest it with uh, uh, all the all the horror and terror that you had hoped after reading when you read the script that you thought the monster was, was going to be like. But in fact, all that does is make you respect um, the other doctors more because we do the show at a time when we have a lot of uh, more money and a lot of technology, and most of our stuff looks amazing. Uh, and, 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 and all of the previous doctors have worked really with. Uh, a lot of uh, unconvincing latex, uh, cardboard, and uh, uh, rice, and porridge, and stuff. Uh, and never for a second have they ever shown you anything other than utter commitment to that truth. So that's great acting. You know, it's really, really good acting. Good so thank you very much for the time. One more question. That is you. What is your name? I'm Sylvia. So you asked me to write a Misty spinoff, and I did. <laughs> I'm wondering if there's any possibility that that could actually happen. I was like, God, I'm going to work again. <laughs> You know, the doctor says something really beautiful, and I, I apologize if I'm going to mess up the quote, but it was something akin to, it was in the Dr. Mysterio episode, I believe, and it was, uh, everything ends, and that's awful, but everything begins again, and that's happy. Uh, so if I butcher that, I apologize, but that's the, the ultimate idea, is it's very sad to see you go, I know whatever else all of you are going to do, these people will be here for you, and as a sincere... Fan, um, I just want to say thank you so much for the last few years, and thank you for what you've done for the last several, several years. 